Nuisance third law states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This law gives rise to the popular physics puzzle of what happens when a train hits a fly. If Newton's law is correct, then when a train hits a fly, the fly also hits the train with the same amount of force, which is massive. Being an equal and opposite force, you'd think this would stop the train, or at least cause it to slow down, but we know this doesn't actually happen, and in this video I'll explain why. The fly does indeed hit the train with the same force that the train hits the fly, and this does indeed cause the train to stop, or at least the part of the train which the fly hits. For example, if the fly is 1cm squared, then only a 1cm squared part of the train will stop, not the entire train. This can happen because every material is flexible to some extent. When the train hits the fly, the train will deform elastically for a very short distance for a very short period of time. As the fly has a very small mass, the fly will quickly accelerate up to the speed of the train, and this happens over the distance of the elastic deformation. As the deformation is elastic, the part of the train hit by the fly will now try and reform to its original shape, and in fact overshoots, causing a slight bulge to appear. This part of the train will continue to move back and forth until its original shape is restored, and this vibration, along with the squishing of the fly's body, will give out a slight ping sound, which you may hear when the train hits the fly. Sound can be created in the same way if you throw a tennis ball at a sheet of metal. So a train can safely hit a fly without damage coming to the passengers, and Newton's third law is still true. I hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please give it a comment, thumbs up, and subscribe.